Hello and welcome. Happy 2024. Happy New Year and wish you all the best for this year. Now, let's start with another was the video. In the thumbnail you have seen what's going on. EGR valve or exhaust gas circulation valve, sorry. Why you want to clean an EGR valve? Well, mist fires, like the car is running exceptionally well on gas. That means there is something wrong. Basically those exhausts, fumes that should go back into the intake and, and into the combustion chamber is going somewhere else or being blocked completely off. So that's not good for the engine itself. So that's why you need to do the EGR valve. But I'm gonna clean it, I'm not gonna change it, I'm gonna clean it. And huge warning, before you start even thinking about it, you will need to drop your coolant. So if you're afraid of cooling system or what's in the car, then you should think about it. But in this video, I will go step by step. You will follow me through all of the single things I do, all of them then you can decide yourself how much you do, how much you want to do, or you just want to bring it to my mechanic. Basically, I'll do a little more, like on removing stuff. Let me show you under the bonnet, or, or, or under the hood, or in the engine bay. Okay, come here, come here, where are you? Nice. Now, Mazda logo, up, and about. Now then, if you look at the engine, the EG, EGR valve is right, 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 there. See this gray, grayish plug? The grayish plug goes into the EGR valve. So that, there is the EGR valve, right there, under all this nest of mess. So that is the EGR valve right there, that one. As you can see, there is loads of stuff in the way. Even for me to film, there is loads of stuff, stuff in the way. And this is the hose or, or coolant which you will need to take off to get that much space. And that much space is, is from you taking off the bolt or getting beat by a bolt. And nobody likes to be getting beat by, uh, by a bolt. So, what I'm gonna do in this video, and after you watch the video, you can decide yourself how much you want to take off, how much you want to leave, and everything else. For me, I want to film, so you guys see maximum. So, air filter is coming off, boot is coming off, battery, tray is coming off, and then this hose, this is the hose that goes, sneaks there, around, there, and here. But once I remove all of this, you will see. Now here should be a support bracket for me. But as this is a stand-in battery, stand-in, basically my one is charging and this one is a little too big to, to put the clamp down. So until it charges, I don't have any tie downs. So loosen the tie downs, take off the terminals, basically. That's, that's what will be happening in engine bay. Now before we do all that, the tools we're gonna need is a breaker bar get a breaker bar don't mess around with these those two screws which are going in the engine block are not something you can lo loosen up with a small wrench you will need a 10 millimeter socket 10 and you will need these are the swivel sockets you will need to adapt one swivel socket to a bigger swivel socket and then you have more space to actually undo the last bolt I'll have the Ryobi impact to remove the tray so it's faster. And this is what we're gonna use, EGR and card cleaner. In UK, Colts is the, not the cheapest one, but the best one. And you don't overpay. What's the point of overpaying? And this is a magnet pen, extendable magnet pen or whatever you call it. You will need some pliers because some of them, and one bigger one, I still haven't found it. And this empty jug of screen wash, I'll cut here a hole with, with a blade, I'll show you. To catch all the coolant or antifreeze, because I, w I have to reuse it. 
I still need to make a video how to flush all the system. So I want to catch and reuse what, whatever I can catch. Because I, I don't have a new coolant or antifreeze for it. Obviously coffee, some music, because it will take some time. And we will, and we will need to bleed the system. We will need to bleed, undo the cup, undo this and bleed it. Because once you open that big hose, this all will come out. I guess, let's start. Here is a tab, right here. So you need small pliers to go at the back with your fingers and clip it in. It's, it's a clip, so basically like this. There you go, see? Right here. Basically what you do is from the bottom, you just Press here with the bottom and it will pop out. And then you can lift this up and to get this big wiring right here. To get this big wiring, you can lift this up like this way. This way up and from the back you can get to it. I know you hear the heater, it's min minus two outside, so yeah. Right now, if you wanted to, you can easily get to this hose, that's the hose you need to remove. And the EGR valve is right here. But for me, as I'm trying to do more, I cannot put you here and do stuff around here. That's, that won't work for me. So I'm gonna remove this, so I can put you guys on the side, like around. But this is the minimum you can do, the minimum. So you have, see, you have access here with the pliers. With the pliers you can go here, pull it off. It will all leak here down. But what I will do, I'll make more space. Now that's more like it, that's more like it. Look at all this space I have here. Look at all this. I can even move these cables out, out of the way. If I could somehow move this out of the way and slide the, slide the thing in here. Wait, 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 wait. This comes off. This could go on top. This actually can move up, so it's out of the way. Okay, let's, let's make this a bit more movable. If you see these kind of things, tape them up, use tape to tape them up, 
my hands are scratched right here because once you go in here and it just scratches you and it can scratch your skin it will be red but if you tape them up see like it like it's here it's taped tape tape them up i did yesterday this one but i'll already tape it so you can move it out of the way and right here for this main harness right here is the the same thing as here it's the same same plug right there so i can unplug this and move this away basically i can move this somewhere here I'll use electrical tape to make this happen there where it came off Look at that professional So what I have done, I removed a couple of these, so th this wiring isn't too, too much because this was hooked there, this was there, here was hanging something, so I removed all this space. Now let's start the party, because now it starts going. We will remove this. This is for the EGR valve itself. We can remove this one right here. Press down the tab and towards yourself. That, that's for the EGR valve. Let's put it out of the way. Now, we will undo this one and move it down here. We will undo this one, move it down here. I couldn't find pliers. That's why I don't like that I don't have my own, my own garage. That one is down, now this one. Play of the game. Look at that. Oh. It will be a gusher. Hey! It worked! I moved this hose upwards and it's only leaking from there. So if I can tape this or move this hose somewhere here. Look at that, the flap you cut off, it catched everything. I'll filter this through, don't worry. So now we can just undo this. Look at that. Perfect. Now we can move this out of the way. That's all. Yeah, I need to change it. You can see it's a dark color. It should be green. 
see I spilled a little bit only. So now we have access this and behind there, behind this pipe. See this one right there, this screw right here. That's the one we, we need to get. This one and this one, and then this will come off. Now this, what goes to the throttle body. Wiggle loose. You can just wiggle it. Hey, and th these are 10 mils, so let's undo them. Ten millimeter swivel head extension and oh yes, oh yes. This was the bolt. This bolt, this bolt right there. That's the culprit. And this has a metal gasket. So right here is a gasket. You can't see it properly, see? And I lost it. And this is the reason why you have these. As that's, that's a metal gasket. You can do this. Hello. Hi. So this gasket goes on like this. Other way. <laughs> like this, yeah. So what, you, what you're cleaning, you're cleaning inside here. See all of the black. That's soot. That's soot from the exhaust and everything else. Now let's start the cleaning process. I'm in a different room. And what you want to do is EGR cleaner, obviously and spray in there. And let it sit, let it sit there. You can see there is fluid inside. Now let's let it sit for some time. You can see already that's carbon. Now if you want to get a fluid like that, use the use the tin, use it in the cup and spray. See, you, you will, you'll be getting liquid. Now, let's let it sit for some time. I found something like this. This I got when I ordered six metallic metal or metal pipe drinking straws. It came with this to clean it. So let's see what kind of liquid will come out. Oh yeah, see it's brownish and we can now, we go around with this, a little bit, some stuff will co comes off.
As you can see, right on the glove. Carbon is coming off, and that's what's what we want wanna get. That's the result we are after. Now you can see it's quite a lot cleaner. It's not fully obviously clean, but if you cannot see inside, like, let me show you. If you can't see inside like this and it's fully blocked, that means your valve is fully blocked. This one is fine. This one's actually fine. Now you can see how, how inside it, it is. If you have a diesel, this will be four times worse. For me, it looked like this never came off the car because of the state. See, the bolts are rusted here. The state of it looks pretty off. So I cleaned this out to make sure that the idling problem which I have is not from the EGR valve. It isn't. EGR valve is perfectly fine. But we still cleaned it up and it all looks looking good. So let's go install this in the car. Now, as this gasket was stuck on the engine, now it won't get stuck there anymore. But I can see that it has threads. See, when you thread it in, the head gasket stays. If this is a metal head gasket. I would recommend to re get a new one, but they don't sell separately. So basically to get this and this, it costs 90 pounds or dollars in the screen. So basically I'm gonna reuse this all and put the screws in. So the head gasket stays or the gasket, not head gasket, the gasket stays. And now you see, it doesn't move that much. It moves only with the bolts. This is ready. So let's go and put it in. Let's thread in the bolts by hand. Now let's get the tool and tighten it. I try to find specifications for the torque for these bolts. I cannot find it. If you know the torque, then tell me the, tell us all in the comments down below. For now, I put it in 10 newton meters. So I'll then tighten them all up in, in 10 newton meters. So it means I'm most hand tight. Yep, 10 newton meters. So I have adjusted it to 10 newton meters. And now we can attach the rest. Basically, this goes back on the throttle body. Ow. The tab goes up. This thing goes up. This is there where it should be. This all are tightened. That's there, that's there. And now we can attach the coolant hose back on and we should be fast because now it will leak whatever is here whatever is in the in the hose will leak out so 
So speed is key. Wait, hold up. Attached, attached, attached. There you go. Lovely. Here is a line, a yellow line left. So I'm gonna move it that way. Now what happened there is, if you put this clamp right here, it opens up even more, it goes into the hose. So basically, you cannot grab it with the normal pliers. You have to mess around basically, yeah. <laughs> so whatever I unplugged, undid and took off, I need to put it back on. As the process is exactly the opposite of what I did. I'll just put you here, so you can watch how I put, plug everything back in. All right then, time to double check the work we did, or I did. This is plugged, fully plugged. These cables won't go away. Positive, negative, and I'm gonna chuck this lamp. Soon that lamp will fucking fly. So this is connected, that's connected, that's connected there. That's plugged in here, plugged, plugged, plugged. This is plugged, fully plugged, this is plugged too. This royal routes here, goes there, 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 everything is good. So we can put in the battery and that's it. But hold up, first we need to fill this hose up. Because right now if you squeeze it, it's empty. Everything is empty there. So I'm gonna use a funnel. And in the funnel I will put a mesh filter. This is a 190 micron filter. So basically all the big dirt and everything will stay in the filter. It won't go in the engine because this all it's kind of dirty and I know I have to change the coolant so don't you worry so now you can unscrew, unscrew the cap and just pour it in that simple it's bubbling inside here it's bubbling because that's where the air is and this is the highest point in the loop And right now what I'm gonna do, you can see right now, the liquid is there, see? And it's slowly bubbling. Basically now you can squeeze this pipe to help all, all the air to escape. And that's why I didn't put the battery back in, because you can squeeze this one. Mm. 
there will be loads of bubbles coming, loads. I can take out the filter. And it's sucking in more. See? It all sucked everything down because I'm squeezing this pipe. See? It's still empty, so I need to fill up more, even more. That's it, that's empty. And we filter it through all the dirt, see? The dirt is all there, so this filter is done. See, bubbles are coming up. The more you squeeze the pipe. Now let's squeeze somewhere there. Remember, we lost more than we catched. Because it was dripping, remember? Did you hear that? How, how much air? Look how much it sucked in. How, how many bubbles are there? Those bubbles, we, we have to get rid of them. One way or another. There is still lots of bubbles and our mission is to get out those bubbles before we start the engine before we start and maybe get a bubble somewhere else in the system so as we took only off this pipe and it goes here we need to squeeze it to make sure that we don't lose anything else and as you saw there were drips dripping down so that goes from this those drips should be in here but they aren't so say what you wanna but that's the curse we have now. I burped how much I could till it's here. The fluid is just right here. And I top topped up the overflow. So right now we're gonna put in the battery and crank the engine. And then we will see how much it will suck down. If there are a lot of air bubbles, it will just whoop, gone down. So right now what we do is connect the battery. And what was the best? That the engine doesn't know how the battery beat me. So right now what we're gonna do is watch this if this will suck everything down so right now i'm gonna start the car and once the car starts we will wait for it to heat up and to see if there aren't any bubbles if, if it isn't overheating or anything else because if it's overheating that means there's an airlock in the system ready let's start the car and see It's all right, it's all right. Let's just do this. I know they, I know it's everything is noisy because I have the heater on and now the engine is on. But we are waiting for the thermostat to open now. As the engine heats up, everything heats up. Actually, I, I should, I should check the, I should check the temperature. Oh, it's sitting there, it's sitting there. Okay, it's heating up slowly, and I turned on the cooling. Okay, let me rev the engine a little bit. Stay. The thermostat should have been opened already. Okay, let's go for a for a ride. I know it will leak. It will leak. Okay. I checked. Let's go check inside. Let's check the temperature. And we have hot air here. So hot air is coming, the temperature is coming. 
So let's go for a little drive. If it climbs higher than... If it climbs high, then we know there's a problem. So we're back in. Let's go and check. We still have... Air is hot. Air is actually hot. The temperature didn't spike. Proof. Now let's go and check. Now we, this is hot. And be careful. See? It has pressure in there. So that means it's good. And you saw pressure, not... There wasn't the air escaping sound. But there was liquid sound. So that means we bled it. We fully bled it. Nice. So, job is done. That means... Congratulations to you. You stick together or you know how to change the EGR valve on the 2010 Mazda 6 GH 2.5 liter 4 cylinder banger. And for me, a little bit. Thank you for watching. If you like this video or you have extra information, leave it in the comments down below. And I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.